Hi, my name's Venus O'Hara and welcome to another video. Yesterday I received this very interesting message. Hi Venus, I'm curious if you're still sober and if so, why you chose, why you choose not to do any more videos about it. Mm, interesting, interesting. So am I still sober? Well, it's very interesting. I've wanted to talk about this topic for some time now and I've actually, actually tried to make two videos and they just didn't work out. For example, the first one I made, um, I tried to, I sent it to my computer from, because I've recorded on my phone, and it recorded in slow motion. It's like, whoa, 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 alcohol. <laughs> and then the second one I made was when I had the stitches in my eye, because I had um, in my eyebrow, and I made a video of you about a week ago. A, a book review and I look pretty scary on that video because I had um, a black eye due to an accident I had in a, in a museum but I was dying to make a video because it had been so long and I thought it would be really easy to talk about the alcohol thing but that video I just thought nah I'm not gonna put that one up so I was thinking about how am I going to talk about this topic and then I received this message so perfect and am I still sober well yes I am it, I haven't had an, um, alcohol now for five years. It's, I think it's going to be five years next month in August. I don't remember the actual day, but I do remember that by August the 15th, I was not drinking because um, I hadn't actually taken a conscious decision to give up ever. It was because I had a very important photo shoot that was supposed to be um, I think it was supposed to be in October, so I thought, well, I'll just give up alcohol, chocolate, pizza, and other treats, and Coca-Cola, and terrible things like that, just to lose a bit of weight. And I've never ever done a diet in my life. I just, um, whenever I wanted to do um, a professional photo shoot, it was literally just cutting out unnecessary calories, and alcohol is definitely one of those. So that's what I did, and over time, my photo shoot kept getting delayed and delayed and I was just reaping the benefits of sobriety. So it wasn't a conscious uh, decision ever to give up alcohol, but there were lots of things in my life that kind of accompanied it. Um, and that was one of them, just having a photo shoot that was delayed. So I didn't feel that I was, I didn't have any internal pressure. I, well, I did, well, the pressure, the decision to, to give up temporarily was definitely, definitely my own, but it wasn't something I wasn't kind of beating myself up about it, like I'm never gonna drink again. It was just, I'm not drinking for now. So it wasn't really, I don't know, it was just a very easy decision to make. And also um, two of my best drinking friends in Barcelona had left Barcelona. So that made things a lot easier for me. Cause I do think that when people give up alcohol, it can be very difficult, especially in your social situations, because some of your friends, they might want you to be to be their drinking partner, and you might not, you might see that some of your friendships don't have or can't can't stand sobriety, you know. Because I mean, yeah. So so I've been very lucky in that sense that well, I, it was hard at the time because one of my one of my two best friends at, at, at that time left. I, I felt a bit lost, but it was actually the perfect um, situation for me to actually start a new life and start a new social life that was revolving around daytime activities and more healthy activities than going out to bars and clubs and all of that. Yeah, so it, yeah, five years next month and I made a video a couple of years about it called Three Years Sober or something like that. And what I have to say today is pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that's different now is um, the coronavirus lockdown. That has been a very difficult situation for many people. And there was one moment when I was um, I was in a shop. Well, well, well I, I kind of like went out of my uh, not out of my comfort zone, but we were supposed to stay within a, a, a kilometer of our homes um, for the first month or so. And I was dying to see a friend, so I went to see a friend who lives 1.7 kilometers away. And I had my bag on me just in case the police stopped me, you know, and I had to make sure I had some shopping on me. So I bought some fake shopping, so to speak. So I went, I went to a shop and I was thinking, what can I buy? And I was thinking, I have everything I need at home, but I need to buy something just in case the police stopped me. And I just ended up on this alcohol aisle. And I looked around me and I thought, all the, I saw all these bottles. And for a millisecond, I thought, oh, wow, if I'd been a drinker, I would definitely have bought something. And that's why I'm so glad that I'm, I gave up alcohol before all of this happened. Because I think if I was a drinker, I would have been drinking every single night. And I think a lot of people probably 
ended up drinking more on lockdown because it's a very difficult situation to be in, and especially in my situation with living in a shoebox apartment. I mean, oh my God, that was, it felt like a prison cell a lot of the time. So yeah, I think I'm, uh, I would have had more to drink during lockdown had I been a drinker, but fortunately that's not the case. And in terms of temptation, I haven't really had any, any genuine temptation, but I have actually um, had a lot of reunions with friends from my past, my past lives when I was a drinker. And there have been a couple of comments of, oh, you're not my drinking partner anymore. However, I think that your real friends will support you no matter what. And I'm actually going to, for a drink tonight, I should not drink, uh, dinner tonight with two friends that uh, I've been friends with for almost 20 years. And th those, those two friends know each other as well, but they haven't seen each other for 17 years or something like that. And they were like, oh yeah, we can drink together. And then I'm gonna be kind of drinking my fizzy water on the side. But I don't really feel tempted in those situations because I feel quite um, a lot more maybe inner peace uh, than when I was a drinker. And I think um, sometimes when I, when I did drink, I was trying to just literally wind down and uh, ha create some, some type of inner peace, which I'm not really sure you can do with alcohol. I think people think they can, but it's not real, it's not authentic inner peace. Mm. So yeah, so they're, they're my experiences on alcohol. And also in this apartment, I've never, ever, ever brought alcohol here, ever, or any meat or any animal products. And I love sober, sober life, sober living and um, having a sober social life. Because now I'm also an organizer of Barcelona Vegan Community. And our meetups that usually revolve around food. And I find that a lot of other vegans are not really drinking either you know so i'm not the only one drinking water so i'm not really in a situation where i'm the only one who's sober if you see what i mean I'm, I'm surrounded by people who who are making similar choices to me so it doesn't really feel like such a big um challenge and then the other part of the question was why i don't make videos about it well how much i think i've made quite a few videos about alcohol i've got um a few about why i gave up and three years sober and sober dating as well which is a very interesting topic because for me even though i'm vegan as well um for me the alcohol thing is way more of a deal breaker in a relationship situation than someone eating meat or dairy or something like that because i think the alcohol culture i just can't stand it <laughs> i can't stand meat either but i just think um it would be difficult for me to uh to be with someone who smells of alcohol, wants to go to bars and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I just think also, um, I think it's quite self-destructive to, to drink alcohol. There's absolutely no point to it, um, no point at all. And when you can find inner peace without being drunk, then you, you realize that there's no, there's no point whatsoever. Yeah, so I hope this inspires someone to drink less or maybe, consider um, some sober social social activities. I think, that, I think that's really important. I remember before I gave up alcohol, I used to not, sometimes not go out in the week and I thought, oh, I can't be bothered with the hangover tomorrow. And I never thought that the option of not having the hangover and not drinking was there. And I wasn't someone who could maybe, if I wanted to have one drink, I wanted a second drink as well. So I thought um, it was best to, it was, it's really the best thing for me to actually not drink anything at all. Yeah, but what has changed for me is um, you realise how crap music is <laughs> when you go out. That's um, that's something that's quite an eye opener when you're sober. And also money, I think. Um, imagine, I used to think about all the money I was spending on self-destruction and alcohol can be quite expensive, especially here in Spain. Each drink can be 10 euros. That's quite a lot. Imagine in a month how much, uh, how much you spent on just ruining your body and then all the time you've wasted on with hangovers whereas now when i go down to the bottle bank i'm putting bottles of kombucha of my chia seed oil organic um extra virgin olive oil all of these nice things that are good for me and and also my social money socializing money is now spent on pampering um, massages and fun things like eating in restaurants. Yeah, so they have my am I still sober answer 
definitely. And um, I hope this is inspiring. And if any of you have any suggestions for any other videos, then please don't hesitate to contact me at venus at venusohara.org. Or, or you can add me on Instagram at venusohara. Thanks for watching.